Today I'm going to walk you through getting started with RAD Ribbon View. As a reminder, RAD Ribbon View is part of the Telerik RAD Controls for Silverlight and RAD Controls for WPF Control Suites for .NET XAML development. In today's video, first we're going to add a new RAD Ribbon View to our project. After that, we're going to take a look at the Visual Studio Design widgets and see just how they can speed up our RAD Ribbon View creation process. Finally, we're going to hook up some events just to see how RAD Ribbon View works and how we can start integrating it with our solutions. Stepping into Visual Studio, I'm going to go ahead and use the Telerik Visual Studio extensions to start a new RAD Controls for Silverlight project. From a new project window, I want to make sure Telerik Silverlight is selected, and I'll do a C Sharp RAD Controls Silverlight application. We'll call this RAD Ribbon View dot getting started. Click OK. Now we have the new Silverlight application window coming up. We don't want to change any of these settings. We definitely want to use Silverlight 5 because we're using the Q1 2012 release. So we'll click OK once again. And now we're at the Telerik Project Configuration Wizard. In our scenario, we want to go and find Ribbon View, select it, and you can see that also Telerik Windows Controls Navigation, Windows Controls Input, as well as Telerik Windows Controls were all selected, taking any uncertainty out of which assemblies we actually need to get this control up and running. I'll go ahead and click Finish and let Visual Studio take care of creating my project. Now that Visual Studio is all loaded up, we can see in our references that we have the Telerik Windows Controls, Input, Navigation, and Ribbon View of Assemblies, so the same ones we saw in the Project Configuration Wizard, and now we can go ahead and add Ribbon View to our solution. But before I do this, I want to do a quick grid setting with some row definitions that will allow for RAD Ribbon View to display properly. So grid.row definitions, and I want to add a row definition with height equal to auto. This will be for RAD Ribbon View, and then another row definition. The reason I'm doing this is, is because RAD Ribbon View goes by the Office UI guidelines, which state that if the screen goes below a minimum size, the ribbon should collapse to allow for more screen real estate for the smaller application. So since RAD Ribbon View influences this, we want to give it a row definition height of auto, so that when it collapses, we don't have a row that is taking the height of a RAD Ribbon View, but not actually showing any content. So now we'll go ahead, use the Telerik namespace to add a RAD Ribbon View to our project, give it a name of X Ribbon View. And we'll go ahead and close this up. And now we can see that Designer is actually showing our ribbon view. So we can see that we have the My Application settings set, what looks like the Office UI button, and we also see some little arrows here for the Visual Studio Design widgets. I'm going to go ahead and minimize the Solution Explorer and Properties windows, give us a little bit more room to work with. And now I can go ahead and click this widget to see what it contains. And we'll give our design surface a little bit more room. And now you can see we have a few settings up front that we can set. First up, application name. So this will be my great ribbon oh, ribbon app. We can go ahead and make this a little bit smaller so everything stays on screen because this is confined to the designer window. Title. This, if you're working on documents, would probably be something that's changing. For the sake of this, we're just going to say my title so you can see it in action. And we also have some settings here we can do right from the context menu. So is minimized, minimizable. Minimize button visibility. None of these we want to mess with right now. We just want to leave it with the default settings. But we can go ahead and add a brand new ribbon tab. So I'll click Add. And now we can see a ribbon tab has shown up in the designer. If I click on it, we now have a ribbon tab being displayed as well as an Add button. This is going to let us go ahead and add a new RAD ribbon group. And within this ribbon group is where we display buttons, drop downs, any of our functionality we want to include in our ribbon. So if I click on our ribbon group, we can see that we have a header that we can set. So this will be home, like in most standard Office applications. And now we have the option to add some controls to it. Looking at this controls list, we can see we have drop down button, split button, toggle. But I want to go with the ribbon button. So we'll do a few quick adds of ribbon buttons. And now we can actually go into them, still using the designer, and modify some settings. So click on the first button. We'll give it a quick content of 1. Keep it nice and simple. The second button, we'll say this is 2. And the third button, we will say this is content 3 just to make it nice and easy to display. But if I go back and click on this ribbon tab again, I'll go ahead and add one more ribbon group. Click on that, again, using only the widgets. I haven't actually touched XAML except for adding my ribbon view to my design surface. And for the header here, we'll put some generic like file operations. And we'll add a drop down button. In the drop down button, we can once again set the content. Check this out, something to really entice users to check the drop down button content. And now, like I said, we have this ribbon tab with two groups and, and four buttons overall. 
But if we go back and look in our XAML, we can see that this has actually generated a nice bit of XAML for us, saving us a lot of typing and a lot of time. And this is one of the great helpers of using the Visual Studio Design widgets that we have created, and that you can lay out a pretty basic scenario and basic setup for your ribbon view without ever actually leaving the Visual Designer. But now you can go ahead and customize these different options to add different functionality, to add pictures, icons, and the like. In the case of the ribbon buttons, I'm going to go ahead and add an event to each of them. So we can say click, and we're actually going to use a brand new event, ribbon button click. We're going to use the same exact event for all of these, just to make it a little bit easier to demonstrate. Click, ribbon button click, quick save, step into code, and we want to add an event here just so we can see what we're clicking. So we'll go ahead and say red ribbon button, add our using button equals sender as red ribbon button. And now we want to do something really quick to demonstrate which button we're using. So we'll go ahead and say red window dot alert button dot content dot two string. Now if you remember, we set the content to be one, two, and three for these, so it's going to be really easy to tell which button we've pressed. We'll go ahead and launch this in Internet Explorer and see how that event works out for us. Now our Internet Explorer is all loaded up, we can see our ribbon view in action. So we have our title, our application name. We can see we have this first tab, but we didn't actually give a name. We have one in design view, but we have to actually set a name on the control. So once we get back to code, we'll go ahead and set that. But what you can see is our two ribbon groups that have one, two, three buttons, and then the drop-down button. Of course, I haven't defined anything for the drop-down button, so clicking it isn't actually doing anything. But for one, two, and three, click two, for example, and we have our route window, which is showing the content that's displayed. So it's really easy to actually hook this up with events and get working with the ribbon view. But what if we want to do something a little more complex, like I said, for example, the drop-down button? Well, we'll step into XAML for that one. Back in Visual Studio. Wait for the design to load up. And now we can see we have our Rad Ribbon tab, which was lacking a header. So we'll go ahead and say header is going to be I'm a tab. And now we want to go into Rad Ribbon drop-down button. So stepping into our XAML. We want to go ahead and do something to modify what's showing up when we click the drop down. For this, it's actually pretty easy and intuitive. Telerc, red ribbon, drop down button. This is going to be drop down content. Now, normally, of course, you're thinking, I want to set the content, but the content for this is what's displaying in the button itself. The drop down content is what displays when you actually click and want that drop down to appear. In this case, a great option would be a rad menu because the styling and theming is going to match up perfectly with your rad ribbon bar. And a rad menu does seem like a really logical option for displaying content in a drop-down like this. So we can go ahead into the Telerik namespace, say rad menu. Its name will be X rad menu. Keep it really simple. Orientation in this case, we want it to be vertical. And now we just want to add a few items. So Telerik rad menu item. Header equals one. And we'll go with a very similar paradigm to what we did in that ribbon group before. And say one two, and three. So now we have this rad ribbon drop-down button, and it has a rad menu inside for the drop-down content. Go ahead and start this up again, and we're going to be able to see how this works in action, as well as our I'm a tab header on our tab in the application. Once again, ribbon view is all loaded up. We now see our tab header. We still have the one, two, and three buttons with their click functionality. But now in the drop-down button, we'll go ahead and click and see that red menu display with our three menu options. So again, this only took a few minutes to set up, and using the Visual Designer, you can go ahead and lay out a pretty complex ribbon and then go about adding functionality, icons, headers, all the different things that you want to to make your ribbon bar really functional and really work within your application. I hope you've enjoyed watching Getting Started with Rad Ribbon View. Stay tuned for more in the series as we cover more of what Rad Ribbon View has to offer to your line of business applications.